In this video lecture, we're going to take a look at some ways that you can modify your shell. This is going to be a really basic video lecture, and the idea here is to just kind of introduce you to the kind of things that you can do to customize your shell environment. So the first thing we want to talk about is that you have the ability to change the uh, interactive shell that you're using when you work in uh, Linux or Unix. And most of you are probably familiar with Bash as your default shell, but it's not the only shell that's out there. And as you advance into your uh, advance your Unix skills, you'll probably realize that maybe there's another shell that's better suited to your needs. Uh, sometimes also you might log into a machine and the shell that you're running uh, won't be Bash, so you'll need to know how to modify um, or change shells to hopefully get Bash available to you. I mean, it's, it's a good idea to know how multiple shells work, but in the beginning I usually recommend that students just kind of focus on Bash uh, until they get comfortable with it, and then they can start to look into it, uh, extra shells and see what they uh, features they can provide. So on a Unix system, you'll find, uh, or you should find, remember Unix is highly customizable, so these are uh, locations are always subject to change, but for the most part, you'll find all of the shells available on a system uh, announced in a file called slash etc slash shells, and you can always take a look at that file uh, to see what shells are available on a system. Uh, the binaries for shells on your system should usually be in the slash bin directory, and you have a couple of options when working at the shell. You can go ahead and uh, permanently change your shell, so every time you log in, you get a different shell. Uh, and you can perform that with the chsh command and then give it the path to the shell you would like uh, to change to permanently. And one of the things you'll notice is that um, you can always see your default shell by looking at your entry in the slash etc slash password file. So again, that, that's world readable, so it should give you information about what your login shell is. And we'll take a look at that when we jump over to the command line. You also have the ability to temporarily modify your shell. Uh, just by simply uh, giving the path to the shell or executing a new shell command. So if you're in bash uh, and you want to execute ksh, you just give uh, the ksh command and what it'll do is temporarily jump you into a ksh um, session and then when you're done you can just type exit and you'll go back to your regular um, bash uh, interactive shell. So it's kind of a nice way to quickly jump into uh, different uh, shells so that you can execute either a script or or maybe do something that you know is a little bit easier in that specific shell. Let's look at some of these concepts on the command line. One of the things you might want to know when you're working at the command line is what shell you're running. One way to do that is to look at the shell environment variable, issuing the echo command, dollar sign, and then all capital shell, and it will tell you what shell you're currently running. A couple of other things that I mentioned that you could do is you could say want to know what your current default login shell was and that is actually in the Etsy password file so if I grep uh, user JSON in the Etsy password file you'll see my line from the Etsy password file and you'll notice that the last item on this line from that file is slash bin slash bash and that is my uh, current login shell so we talked about this idea that you could um, change your login shell and you could also temporarily change your shell so let's take a look at what um, shells are currently available in this system. And so valid login shells on this system are uh, bin sh, dash, bash, and rbash. And I said most of these are in bin, so if I do an ls of bin uh, and do star sh, because most uh, shells end in sh, you can also get an idea of what shells are installed in the system. So two different ways to kind of see what shells are installed in the system. And so at any given time, I can jump into one of these shells. So I'm in the born again shell, but let me just run into the born shell, which is sh. So if I just type sh, uh, you'll notice that my prompt changed. And if you notice when I do the echo dollar sign shell, it still shows me bash because echo shell is only going to show me um, my login shell. If you want to find out what shell you're currently using, there's a little trick you can use with the ps command, which is for uh, navigating a man or viewing processes on the system. If you use ps slash or ps space dash p dollar sign dollar sign, uh, it'll actually show you the process ID of your current shell because those dollar signs have a special meaning uh, in that they say uh, basically uh, the basically the process ID of the current process. Uh, it's a little trick that you can use to see your current running shell. Uh, and so if you are in a shell and you don't know what it is, that is one quick way to remember how to do it. Another quick way to see what shell you're using is to echo dollar sign zero. 
which will give you information about the currently running process. And at this point, uh, since you are in your shell, it will always return your process. If you want to permanently change your login shell, the command to do that is chsh. And the way you do it is you give the name of the user for which you want to change their login shell. Because of permissions, you should only be able to change your own. If I do dash, dash s, after that I can give the name of the new shell that I want to be my login shell. Uh, at this point, it'll ask me for my password. And what you'll notice is if I uh, grep my name uh, in the password file, is that now my login shell has been changed to sh. And if I want to change it back to bash, I just give the same command, chsh, my username, dash s, the name of the shell I want to switch to, give my password, and now I'm back to where I was. So you can also permanently change your login shell. Let's talk a little more specifically about the bash shell and some ways that you can customize the bash shell. In your home directory, you will find a couple of dot files. These are files that are invisible to you unless you use the ls-a command. So it's an easy way to hide files. And these uh, configuration files, this idea of a dot configuration file is pretty standard for a lot of different applications on the system. But you're no, mostly going to be interested, uh, especially if you're, um, depending on the Unix system, but if you're using bash, you're, you're mostly going to be interested in the dot bash rc and the dot bash underbar profile file. And one of the things that's usually confusing uh, to first time Unix users, and it's actually even confusing to me, is what customized um, configuration features go in what file. And there's kind of historical reason for why things go where they go. Um, and, uh, you know, there's always, I'm sure, um, if you're a system administrator, it's a good idea to, to really look up exactly what goes where. Uh, but from a user perspective, you can pretty much put these things anywhere because the, um, the files themselves are actually executed um, when you log in and there's kind of a cascade and one file then includes information from another file and includes information from another file and specifically we'll look at uh, how this works on Ubuntu and take a peek at how what's in these configuration files and kind of why or how you might change them and usually the comments at the tops of these files will give you some additional information. One of the things that can be really helpful when you're learning uh, to use Unix and Linux is to get yourself out of bad habits. And so let's say you come from the uh, Windows world and you keep finding yourself typing DOS commands instead of the uh, Unix command equivalent. One of the nice things that you can set up in um, your uh, .bash RC file is this concept of shell aliases. And what you can basically do is you can take common commands and you can give them new names. You can also create shortcuts for really long uh, commands. So instead of constantly typing ls space dash lah, you could have like la be the command that executes that. So you can actually, if you find yourself typing really long commands over and over and over again, you can create an alias that allows you to type less and execute that exact same command. And in this slide, I've actually aliased ls to dir, so it works a little more like dos. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it sometimes can be helpful. Um, please note there are actually DOS tools that you can use in Unix, uh, or at least there were. So, um, you know, you, you really should learn the Unix way of doing things, and aliases like this are just kind of a nice short-term crutch while learning to transition to a full Unix way of thinking. The one thing that most users really want to change when they log into a system, and especially an Ubuntu system, because they tend to have really long prompts, uh, is the prompt itself. Um, the thing you see uh, at your cursor when you log into a Unix system. Uh, and customizing a prompt is a little bit like customizing your desktop in a graphical user environment. So if you like to put different pictures on your desktop or you really like to customize your uh, work environment in a GUI, uh, customizing your prompt is, is similar to that. The other nice thing about customizing your prompt is it allows you to get just the information that you want uh, for a specific you know, uh, terminal or login session so that you can get some useful information from that prompt. Also make sure you're not technically or accidentally logged in as the wrong user or logged in as another user uh, or you know display things like what directory you're currently in. It's really up to you. Uh, and again in the .bash RC files where you're going to find this, uh, there's a series of special escape characters that you can put into your prompt. And what you're going to notice is we're actually just going to be um, editing a, an environment variable called PS1. There's actually a couple of different ones, PS1, PS2, PS3, uh, and those relate um, to different shell sessions. But for now, we're just mostly looking at your main prompt, which is PS1. And so the example I've got here is if I set the PS1 environment variable to be slash u slash dollar sign, 
what you're going to find is that it will actually uh, print my uh, username uh, followed by a dollar sign. So these kind of escape characters can be really helpful for customizing our shell and we'll take a look at this on the command line. Let's start by taking a look at our bash rc file. I'm going to make sure I'm in my home directory and I'm going to do an ls-a of my home directory. And you're going to notice a couple of files in here. Uh, specifically you're going to notice my bash rc file. And in the lecture I mentioned that there was a file called bash underbar, underbar profile, but you're going to notice that in this case there's just a dot profile file. So sometimes the names of the files um, can be a little different depending on the shell you're using and depending on um, the the system you're on. So in this case we're mostly going to take a look at dot bash rc. So let's look at what this rc file looks like uh, and we'll just dump it to the command line using less. So in Ubuntu the default bash rc file is really big and there's a bunch of things in here um, related to your um, session. And what you'll notice is as you uh, scroll down here, you'll see some information regarding uh, your shell configuration, and some of it may or may not make sense. Uh, what you will notice, though, as you scroll through this file are a number of if statements uh, that allow you to uh, modify how your shell appears. And um, there's some really good articles on uh, the Internet about how you can modify your um, shell within Ubuntu, but I'm going to show you kind of a, a cheap and... Um, easy way to do it. In fact, you'll notice that my shell is already customized. So there's all of these if statements here and all of these uh, specialized configurations for your shell. But if you take a look, you'll notice that after all of those um, things occur, I actually go ahead and then just override them with a simple uh, configuration, similar to what was in the PowerPoint presentation. You'll notice that I actually use double slashes for both of these. Uh, and that is a requirement um, just so that these actually get interpreted correctly. And what you'll notice is um, this is why when we go back out and look at my shell, uh, my shell contains my username uh, and then contains a dollar sign. So this is how you would set up your shell. You would just basically assign to the PS1 environment variable using the equal sign, in this case the assignment operator, and then put the configuration parameters for your shell uh, between double quotes. So and again, a, a quick Google search of bash uh, prompt configuration will give you a, a whole list of these. Uh, and I am sure they are also in the bash man page. So let's take a look at my prompt. And you'll notice that my prompt is uh, dollar sign. And so let's clear this. And um, so it's my username and a dollar sign based upon what I have set up for that PS1 variable. Uh, if I jump over to the root user, you'll notice that I keep that configuration of uh, username dollar sign but notice in this case it changes because my username is now root and it actually changes from a dollar sign to a pound sign to indicate that this is a root shell and again that slash slash dollar sign in my config uh, is really uh, what makes this uh, work this way so I'm going to exit out of that root session and if we want to take a look at this um, if we look at the bash rc file, uh, oh, and then let's look for uh, a line that starts with ps1. Uh, and so again, the reason why this works is because I have slash slash dollar sign. So this kind of is a special character in the sense that says, okay, if I am any user, that's um, if I'm any regular user, show a dollar sign. If I am the root user, root user, show the pound sign. So this is a really simple shell. I tend to like to keep things simple, but again, there are tons and tons of configuration parameters that allow you to customize this any way you want. And you probably should look at the proper way to modify your Ubuntu Bash RC file so that you know you are um, not necessarily doing what I'm doing because those uh, if statements uh, that are above this in the .bash RC file are probably important. <laughs> Let's go back to the .bash rc file and we'll go to the end of that uh, .bash rc file and we'll look at aliases. Uh, and so again, if you go sc scroll through all of these components until finally you get to the end, you'll notice that there's actually a section of the .bash rc file that is dedicated to aliases. And so if you want to, you could add some aliases here to this file. And you'll notice that if I do ll or la or ls, or sorry, l, these are specially uh, aliased ls aliases because you'll probably do like alf a lot 
So what this means is anytime I do ll, that's not an actual command. What it'll actually run is ls space dash alf. So let's take a look at how that works. Uh, and one more item to note is that there's also, if it exists, there's a dot bash aliases file. So instead of having to put all your aliases in the dot bash rc, it's also possible within Ubuntu to put your aliases in a file called um, dot bash aliases so you can keep them in a separate file. So if I do ll, uh, there we go. It gives me that uh, specific type of listing. If I just do l, that works. And then I guess the other one was uh, lh. Oops, or not. So I forget what the other third one was, but those are some nice default um, aliases that you can use uh, with your um, command by default, and you can always add those. So again, if you find yourself doing certain repetitive tasks, um, you should definitely look into um, creating some new aliases. And if you make a file in your home directory called uh, dot bash underbar aliases, you could go ahead and start to put some of those uh, default aliases in here. So uh, aliases show dir equals, I'll just do a straight up ls and I'll quit out of that. And notice by the way these won't take effect right away. Right? I'll get an error. Uh, but if I jump into another bash session and do show dir, then it will work. Once I log in and that bash aliases command gets a chance to be read. So if you create a .bash aliases file in um, on Ubuntu, by default, you can just go ahead and put all your aliases in there. And notice that I was able to create the show dir command, which really just is an alias for uh, ls.